Oh my gosh, I'm so late, guys. I had technical difficulties this morning. <clears throat> no, wait a couple of seconds. How is everyone doing? I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. We were supposed to have like a, what was it, a thunderstorm, a hurricane or something that was supposed to come here. Okay. I'm gonna see if anybody joins me today. If not, that's okay. We'll just make this an informational live chat and just know that next time, I didn't give any warning guys. I was supposed to put like a little, um, clip up letting you guys know when I'm going to go live. I was going to put something on my Instagram and I just, I ran out of complete time to do anything. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I'm sorry that I didn't get any information out, but if I don't have anyone in here to chat with me, that's okay. I'm still giving the information. I wanted to do the unnecessary necessaries of crocheting the five, I'm going to have five things that you need to start crocheting or to get somebody else started crocheting so that you're not wasting money and effort in getting started with something new. So that's what the topic for today is going to be. And I will kind of get into all of that. And if you pop in and you can't hear me, please let me know so that I can adjust the speakers. I think I'm tied to my laptop's speakers instead of my webcam, but I don't know. This has been a real technical fun morning. <laughs> so hopefully it will smooth out and everything will work out perfectly fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What I wanted to discuss with you guys today are the unnecessary necessaries in crocheting. So when you make the decision that I want to start a hobby and I want to do something new and you're like, I want to crochet, right? Or I want to knit. That's the first thing. People always confuse knitting and crocheting. You know, is it the thing that you do with the two sticks or the one stick? And so once you decide which one of those you want to do, whether it be knitting or crocheting, then I want to discuss with you the um, things that you might want to purchase so that you're not breaking the bank before you get into the whole yarn thing. Because yarn in itself is an expense that... Um, can maybe change your thoughts about the hobby if you kind of go too far with it. So let me start off by saying, and we discussed this, my name is Felicia. If you haven't um, found my channel yet, or if you just happen to come across my channel, my name is Felicia and my channel is also Ann here on YouTube. I'm also Ann on Instagram, as well as my website and Pinterest. So if you're looking for information about crocheting and maybe even plants and things, I'm over there on also and so my name is Felicia though so welcome if you have not subscribed to my channel and you find that the content that I put out is helpful please take the time to subscribe the notification bell is more for you than for me it allows you to know when I'm putting out a video I try to do videos at least two to three times a week it just depends this is still something that I enjoy doing it's not um, a full-on job so I put out things that I feel is helpful and that you can benefit from. So if you want to get notifications as to when I do that, that would be helpful so that you don't miss anything. I do um, tutorials. I also do, well, they're beginner friendly tutorials. I also do um, yarn reviews, letting you know what type of yarn is good, especially right before I do a project, I usually do a yarn review on that yarn so you'll know about it. And then I also do giveaways on my channel just because I really believe that sharing is caring. And oftentimes I will overbuy yarn when I'm trying to do a project. And so I will pass that on to you as a blessing to some of my, um, my followers or my supporters. So I do those things on my channel just in case you were wondering. Okay. I can't, you know, it's the craziest thing. I, I had the hardest time logging in this morning. I can't see any live chat. So I don't know if anyone's chatting or not. If you are, I apologize. I can't see you. Um, it's not showing me and I don't know if it's going to catch up or not. But if you are live chatting and I haven't said anything, um, just know that I can't see it yet. And I'm hoping that it will catch in, catch on. Okay. Yeah, my, oh, see, I'm getting chats. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Can you turn the fan on, honey? It's really hot. Okay, so let me see if I can't figure out real quickly how to get these chats on. See, I can hear myself. 
Maybe, can you turn that down? I'm scared to touch anything, you guys. I am so, yeah, I'm trying to that. get better at <laughs> this computer, but okay. So good morning, Vivian, Naturally Amazing, Lavender74, Live, Love, and Learn Naturally. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you. I like my little shirt. You know where I got this from? Five and Below. Do you guys have a Five and Below in your area? It's $5. Um, thank you, though. Kansas. Oh, my gosh. Is it raining there? Tampa. Yeah. Did you guys um, get any storming down there in Tampa? It, it came up the coast, but I don't know where in Florida it ended up. Good morning and greetings. So, yeah, you did. Okay, so I'm going to kind of, my husband popped in and handed me his phone. So I'll look down every now and then to make sure that I don't miss any questions if you have any. And we'll just go ahead and get started. So the unnecessary necessary, that's what I like to call it. It's kind of like the gadgets of crochet. And honestly, who doesn't really want to start a hobby and not get into the gadgets, right? Because the gadgets is where it's at sometimes. When you go into the store and you see all of the neat things out there, that's kind of what like drives you to that. So it can drive you to that hobby. Like, for instance, I like to, well, I don't like to sew. I want to learn how to sew. And let me show you this cool gadget. Oh, look, I was in Hobby Lobby. Now, keep in mind, I do, I don't sew. <laughs> I don't sew yet. But look at this. Isn't this cute? It's a lipstick. And it actually has the nerve, y'all, to wind up and look like lipstick. But you put your stick pins in. I don't even, I don't even sew yet like that, but I still picked it up because I got problems. But yeah, gadgets are really what's fun about, you know, sometimes when you have a hobby, but when you're first getting started, I wanna discuss with you like the necessary gadgets, the things that you really do need, okay? And the unnecessary would be that extra splurge, you know what I mean? So when you're dealing with the first thing with crocheting, you really only need a few items to get you started, right? So you really only need like, <laughs> you really only need like a hook, some yarn, patience. Um, so you do need those things. But most crocheters will start off with like an aluminum hook, just a regular hook, because when you go into the store, especially like a Walmart or a Michaels or Joanne's Fabric, or even when you go online, they'll sell aluminum hooks in a set. So the set typically will have four or five hooks and they'll range in size from like a 2.5 all the way up to a 5.5. And as a new crocheter, you don't know what you're going to need. You just see a hook, it's inexpensive, it's in a set, and you buy it. Well, to me, that is the unnecessary of the crochet hook because typically if you're just now starting unless you know that when you get in you want to be doing dollies and laces and things with fine yarns you're not going to need a 2.5 2.75 3.25 i mean honestly even a four and a quarter hook is small for a beginner so when you're crocheting it's often um enticing to just get everything as a set especially when they sell it like that but the set is the unnecessary, right? So what I suggest for my new crocheters to do is, um, oh, I get it. Thank you for stopping by. You can always check out the replay. Thank you so much. Um, but the the necessary part is just to get you guys some, get yourself a couple of hooks. So I always suggest, like they sell hooks like this, just, I was gonna get something to back this, but I couldn't find. So you can get individual hooks like this. This is an aluminum hook. It's a good starter hook um, for like one or $2, right? And the benefit of doing it like that is you aren't getting hooks that you don't need. So that's the necessary. You need a hook, but you don't need to get multiple hooks, right? Um, and then I also suggest not just getting, so for instance, this is a five and a quarter crochet hook by Boyd. Boyd, there are, there are, we talked about this before, there are tapered hooks and there are inline hooks. You want to try to get maybe one of each kind. So I would suggest doing like a Boyd hook and then like a Susan Bates hook. Susan Bates hook are a little bit different than a Boyd's hook. And we've discussed this and I don't want to go into hooks because I want to do a separate video on hooks because I recently just purchased the furl crochet hook. It was suggested to me and I purchased it and I'm just waiting for it to come and I want to do a full review on the best crochet hook. But 
as a beginner, I just want to point out that when you're looking for a hook, you want to get like a Susan Bates, which has got that type of um, indention, if you can see, maybe against my brown skin. <laughs> and then you have the Boyd hooks, which I don't use these. That's why it's still in the package. They're shaped a little bit different. So without going into the weeds too much, try a Susan Bates and a Boyd and see which type of hook you like. Oftentimes when you start a project, you may pick it up, you may get going with it, and then you say, this is difficult. The yarn's not staying on the hook. I can't stand this. So you put down the whole hobby because you ended up with the wrong tools. So as a beginner, the necessary is getting a couple of good hooks, maybe two different styles, and then, um, the unnecessary is getting that package of hooks. It's just not necessary because oftentimes it's just going to clutter up your space when you could be using that space for yarn in the future, you know? So I don't want to get into the hook thing again, but that's what you'll do. Another thing that you'll need when you're crocheting is, um, ooh, hello, honeydew melons, cute name. I know, I, I agree with you. I, I just prefer the Susan Bate hooked too. And I, when I first started crocheting, I didn't know any different. And I went for years using just the regular hooks that I got out of Walmart, which happened to be the Boyd hooks. And I had no idea. And matter of fact, because the Susan Bates and the Boyds have aluminum hooks, I just kept using them. And sometimes I'll be like, wow, this project is working up so much better, not realizing that it was just the type of hook that I had purchased. So I think that's like really important to um, kind of, you know, keep in mind. So anyway, I'm just looking down every now and then because for some reason my chats aren't showing up. Okay, yarn. So um, another thing that you have to have, that's a necessary, is yarn. A nice light color yarn when you're starting. So black yarns and dark browns and thick dark blues, they're pretty, but as you're starting crocheting, a lighter yarn can be a little bit easier to see your stitch work, right? So the unnecessary is you only really need a nice acrylic yarn or a um, like a four weight or um, a DK weight yarn. You don't need any um, bells and whistles, the type of yarn that's like all plush and mesh and variegated and all that. As a new crocheter, you might want to stay away from this. I like using the Bernat yarn. When I, when I teach crocheting to people or when I want to get someone started, I start with the chunky yarn with a chunky crochet hook. But that's just because that's what I learned on when I did my first like blanket aside from the granny square blanket. And it wasn't that difficult. Once I got past my initial foundation chain, which is always challenging um, to, new, to newbies, um, the chunky yarn worked well for me. But... The, uh, it's not necessary that you go with a $10 chunky yarn. You can absolutely start crocheting with a nice four weight yarn that um, is kind of straightforward. And I always suggest that you start with a smaller project, like a scarf, an affinity scarf, a long scarf, something that's gonna allow you to do repetition of movement, that's gonna get you comfortable with counting stitches, that's gonna get you comfortable with making sure that you have the right gauge. So um, you have, you just need a basic hook and then light color yarn and you really can get started, you know, in the world of crochet. Does anybody have anything that they would suggest to like a newbie that wants to get started? If you're, if you're a newbie, then this is gonna be good information for you. But if you've already been crocheting for a while, is there something that you would suggest to newbies that might be reading the thread or you know, someone that might catch the video a little bit later that I can kind of address too, because it's always sharing is caring. And that's kind of how I feel about everything. So if you have something that you want to contribute, please just let me know and I'll make sure I say it out loud. Okay. So we have the hooks and we have the yarn. Now, here is another thing that is a necess necessary, unnecessary. Once you start collecting hooks, once you start getting different size hooks, it is not necessary for you to get like this standard crochet hook holder. 
it's 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 kind of necessary to have something to put your crochet hooks in, whether it be like a Ziploc bag or some cups or um, a pencil pouch. You can use all those things. But if you choose to go to getting um, like a little pouch, there is a necessary and an unnecessary about the pouch. Okay, so let me just show you. I have two pouches like this. Okay. Um, one was given to me for a review and then one I purchased. So let me just talk to you, you know, quickly about the benefits of these pouches and the necessary and unnecessary about it. When you go into, like once you go online, right, and you're looking for something to hold your crochet hooks with, yeah, okay. Once you go into the, um, on, on online, like if you go to Amazon or whatever, you always they'll always try to entice you to buy a pouch like this that's full of hooks, okay? Um, before I go really quickly, someone had mentioned Live, Learn, and um, Live, Love, and Learn Naturally, which I absolutely love that challenge. Um, she said, try not to get yarn that splits. And that's another thing too. And um, if you stick with like, um, like the red heart type yarn when you're first starting, you won't have as much of an issue with the splitting. I don't know. I don't really like red heart super saver, but I think it's a good yarn to learn how to crochet with. And I know some people that love that yarn if you get comfortable working with it. I like it because it is versatile, it's inexpensive, and it's got good color choices. But um, there are a lot of yarns now, you know what I mean? But you don't want to get a yarn that splits. That's true, very true. Okay, so they'll try to entice you with providing you with a bunch of hooks. Now, these hooks did not come with this kit. And I do not recommend you getting a kit like this that comes with its own hooks because like we spoke about earlier, sometimes you're gonna get a bunch of hooks that just aren't even in the size range that you even need. So you'll probably get one, one, two, one, three, one, four, like that. And if you know you're never gonna use that, that's just taking up space and you just have more stuff that you really don't need. Also, sometimes I find when you get little kits like that and they're already put together. Now, this is just my experience, guys. Sometimes they are inferior products, meaning they don't work as well. The hook at the top isn't um, all the way, um, you know, like for some reason, it's not soldered properly. The yarn doesn't sit under the hook properly. And I feel like if you're new to crochet, want to do is start working with a product that's going to hinder you from wanting to really learn the, the hobby, learn the craft. You know, I think that when you take the time to kind of, I don't say curate, but when you take the time to put your own set together, you'll benefit better from the products that you purchase. So in my case, I typically like Yarnology hooks, which is from a, my local Hobby Lobby, but I also love Susan Bate hooks, which you'll see some of those in here. I love, um, I also love Clover hooks, which I am slowly um, getting these, but I, I don't wanna, like I say, keep wanting to deep dive into talking about hooks, but I'm gonna stop myself <laughs> because that's not what this is about. The point is you want to try to get yourself a, if you're going to get a, um, a little, why did I just lose the name of what this thing is called? A little crochet case. If you want to get yourself a little crochet case, find you one that's empty. That's my suggestion. And fill it up with things that you know you're going to want to use, okay? Um, another thing, hi, Ki, how are you? Is it Ki or Kai? I'm probably saying it wrong. Hi. <laughs> um, another thing too to look for are is I like using larger crochet hook. I love bulky yarn. I love to get the, I, I'm an instant gratification type of gal. So I want to be able to do a project and be done with that same project within a couple of days. That's fun for me. Or even if I can see it growing, you know what I mean? It's one thing to me when you're working with a small weight yarn, with a small hook, and it looks like it's never going to end. Now, at the end of the day, it turns out beautifully. You're happy with the end project, but it's just like watching paint dry. Uh, so for me, I wanted a hook. I wanted a, a case that would allow me to keep my larger crochet hooks. 
you get it? Because that's typically what I use. Six millimeter, sevens, eights, tens, twelves. That's kind of where I sit. I do have some 5.5s and five hooks when I'm doing um, like crochet dishcloths and things. And then I have like a 4.25 that I work with when I'm doing like little, like when I did my crochet lips or hearts and things like that, you'll use a smaller hook. But um, I was looking for a place that would allow, and if you can, I don't know if you can see it, it allows for larger hooks. So this is like a 12 millimeter hook. So super big hook and it fits in here perfectly. Now it is snug, but that didn't bother me. What, bo what I wanted was something that I could carry along with me, okay? Another um, thing, and this carries about 18 hooks. And this is not, this. Feel, I feel like this is a sponsored video and it's so not, it's just that this works well, okay? Another thing that you might want to look for, um, yeah, quick projects, that's like, and then when I'm teaching too, like when I'm teaching you guys how to crochet or someone how to crochet, I want them to be able to see how they can get something done quickly. And then as they get better and as they learn more, they can pick up that intricate, smaller stitch work and really just shine. I just want you guys to get used to the art of crocheting, enjoy it enough to want to learn more. You know what I mean? And if it's a small yarn, small hook project, you're just not gonna get the enjoyment right away. It's not that instant gratification. Okay, so another thing that I like about this particular pouch are the zippers. So I'll go through everything that's kind of in my pouch maybe later, but I like the ideals of having zippers. Um, I think when you're collecting um, little knick-knacky type of things, you want to make sure that um, they don't fall out, you know? So I like this one because not only does it have the mesh see-through pouches, which is great, but you also have a solid pouch. So I'm always gonna recommend this one and it's by IK Snail. Um, I, um, just because I like this design. I like that all my hooks are in one spot and I like the pockets in the back and that they all have zippers, okay? Oh no. Yeah, that's crazy. She, um, Judith was saying that she likes Susan Bait hooks too, but the last time she had got some, she went to three different stores the hook portion was rough and that's definitely a no because if you're crocheting, you don't want your, you know, your yarn to get snagged on the hook. So that's crazy. Oh yeah. And that's a good idea too. Crocheting your own hook pouch. I've seen, I have um, done some zipper pouches, but I also saw a lady here, man, I can't think of her name. It's like NARS. I, I, if I remember her name, I will put it in the description box, but it's like Narzi or something like that. She did a phenomenal crochet hook bag. I don't know if it's beginner friendly, but it's certainly beautiful. And you could absolutely do that too, because if you make your own, you can customize your slots, you know what I mean? Where you want to put your crochet hook. So I think that is, um, that's a great idea, crocheting your own. But I, a zipper pouch would be perfect as well. Um, now this one here, the Demario one, it's a nice one too, but I don't know if you can see, I have this glare guys, I really gotta figure this out. But um, they have hooks, zipper pouches, and then hooks, and then on this side, uh, you can't see it. Okay, can you kinda see it? It's open. I don't, I don't really like that. It's cool if I wanna put like, um, like a post-it note or something in there where I could make notes, which is important. If you're making patterns and stuff, you wanna know what you're doing. Um, but I like my stuff to be zipped up just because I'm careless like that. I will lose, listen, I will lose. <laughs> if it can be lost, you can ask anyone that knows me, I will lose it. I don't mean to be that way. That's not how I wanna be. It's just, <laughs> I gotta work on it guys. But. Um, they have the mesh pockets and then they have, but so these are where I keep my hooks that I don't really, I don't really care so much for. If I need to find a hook or if I have extra hooks, I put them in here, okay? So necessary, unnecessary. Necessary in a sense, if you start getting a lot of crocheting items, this is necessary. Well, I should say, this one's necessary, but um, it's not. It's, it's unnecessary that you get it completely stock packed with already things in it. And oftentimes the way they'll sell it on Amazon 
or stores is it looks like it's like five dollars more or a couple of dollars more and you can get all the fun stuff included but if you're not going to use it then don't spend the five dollars more to get things that you're not going to use spend the five dollars more and go ahead and get the hooks that you really like or get the stitch markers that you really like you know what i mean because that's typically what you'll find in here you'll find a set of crochet hooks measuring tape stitch markers it looks like everything you need to get started but again like i say if it's not if it's like an inferior product or it's a product that doesn't work well, then you've kind of wasted your money and it can be frustrating if you're a new crocheter, you know? Good morning, Marva. Thanks for stopping in. Thank you guys for stopping in. Uh, this has been fun for me. I've said that before. Okay, so we've talked about crochet hooks. We've talked about light color yarn. We've talked about what to put your crochet hooks in. Um, oh, and another thing too, if you don't want to purchase a thing, I, I have a pencil slider. Can you see that? I put a lot of my larger hooks. This light, I don't know. Hold on, let me see. Does that make a difference? I feel like that made a little difference, but I don't know if I look too dark. So if you're in the chat still with me, I turned off my ring light. If it looks too dark, let me know and I'll turn it back on. But I, I kind of feel like you can see what I'm trying to show you better with it off. But anyway, so all of my larger crochet hooks, like these, like this, I will put in this pencil slider pouch. So um, is the slider pouch necessary? Probably not, but is it helpful? Yes, it is. Because my really super large hooks won't fit in here, like a 15 millimeter hook when I do really big chunky, like I have a chunky cowl on my channel that I created. It used a really chunky um, yarn and a really big crochet hook. I put that in here. Oh, thank you so much. It's been fun doing these lives. I, I tell you, the back end of it has been a little bit challenging because I'm not, I'm not a front camera type of person. <laughs> I feel like I do better behind the camera, but um, this has been fun for me to kind of get to step into something that I'm not always comfortable with. So I have the light off still. So if you guys notice that it, I look a little too dark or washed out, let me know. And I'm sure my husband he'll look in a little bit and tell me if I look like I need the light off. Okay, so that was the crochet hooks or anything. Does anybody have anything that they can add to that? Like, is, um, do you guys have any um, specific um, crochet, <laughs> crochet bags that you like that I can mention to anyone? Okay, so crochet hook grips. I have that written down these now when you first start crocheting you most likely will have aluminum crochet hooks because well I shouldn't say that now because now when you go into the store they have so many different types of hooks and so but if you're looking if you're trying to start that hobby on a on the low you'll probably pick up the aluminum hook okay when you start working long projects with the aluminum hook, they have then come up with this crochet hook, um, like a sleeve, like a cushion. You know, back when we were in school, a long time ago, they used to have like the pen cushions or the pencil cushions. They did the same thing for your crochet hooks. Now, I don't find this is necessary only because now you can get so many ergonomical or ergonomic hooks that have a nice cushion on them. So for instance, like this. This is also a Boyd hook. What I like I said, I don't really use Boyd hooks so much, but it has a nice cushion. So this would become a necessary if you have a hook that already has its own, right? But it can be helpful if you purchase some of these, you don't want to get rid of them. They're good hooks, but you're working a long project, this would help. Okay, so I don't really need these um, for any reason. I am, which I'm going to talk about scissors next. I'm going to take one of these out to try to make a sheath for my scissors. 
So if anybody wants to try these, just let me know. And if it's more than one person, then I'll just pick out of the people that um, want to. But these are just crochet hook grips. I got them from Hobby Lobby. If you don't mind that one will be missing because I'm going to use it for some scissors, I'll send this to someone that wants them. If not, I'll hang on to them, but crochet hooks. How does it look with the light on? I know. Um, it's just that side of the face is a Okay, I turned the light back on. Hello, how are you, Lola? Thank you for coming in. I don't know, you're, you're, you probably didn't hear me at the very beginning. Some, for some reason, my chats are not showing up on my computer. So I have a phone here and I'm kind of trying to look at the chats and chat. So if I don't respond immediately, it's just because I didn't see it come through immediately. But guys, still interact. I will try to um, talk to everyone as I see things coming through, okay? So if, like I said, if anybody's interested in trying these, if you or you want some more, just let me know and then I will send them to you. But they'll be missing one. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. The next thing that's necessary are scissors. You are going to need scissors if you're going to crochet, but the unnecessary, so you're going to need some basic scissors. Um, but the unnecessary are when you get all fancy, right? And you get the embroidery scissors. And there are so many cute embroidery scissors. Like just the other day, I posted on my Instagram stories. I was in Hobby Lobby. Y'all, I probably need to get sponsored from them, guys. But I was in Hobby Lobby and they had some really cute scissors that had like a little spool, like of yarn. And I don't know, it was just super, super cute. But um, the unnecessary are you do not need tapestry scissors, right? You just need some simple scissors to cut through the yarn. I will give a plug though for tapestry scissors because they're super sharp. Um, they have little resistance when you kind of cut through things like they almost, it's just so smooth. It's like you're cutting through like a marshmallow, just super smooth, cutting through butter. Um, and they are super sharp, but these are embroidery scissors and, um, but they're not necessary. So necessary, yes, to have scissors, unnecessary to have really pretty ones. But who doesn't want really pretty scissors? Now, I will say I found these about two years ago at Hobby Lobby. And what they are, they're travel scissors. Can you see? Perfect for traveling. Perfect. So this is not necessary, guys, but it is, though, you know, <laughs> because it comes with a little sheath and it sits. You can either put it on your keychain or in your purse. These are per these are perfect. I love these. I would say if you had any scissors to get those just because they're so perfect and they're easy to travel and they fit inside my little kit perfectly with no issues. See, just like that. So I love those type of scissors. So the necessary is scissors. The unnecessary is the, the frilly ones. But they're so pretty, so why not, right? <laughs> um, okay, another necessary to crocheting to some level is the yarn, I mean, the yarn needle, the darning needle, right? So you can get needles. I'm going to turn my light off again because I want to show you, but I, I don't know if you guys can see it. So I'm sorry for the up and down. I just really feel like you can see me better with it. Okay. See, these are yarn needles. And I love the metal ones too. Um, but I would have to say that the metal ones are the unnecessary. You can use the metal ones and they have usually a blunt in. And I like them. I don't give. I like them. It's just with me and needles. Like I said before, I tend to pick things up and then put them down, so I could find needles anywhere. <laughs> Literally, like I, they're like bobby pins for me. I will find one and put it somewhere, and then don't know where it is again. So for me, the um, the metal needles are not necessary in a sense. They're a little bit more expensive. 
you can get away with using just a straight up plastic needle like this and you can get them even bigger and I like the plastic ones because you it works well with um, chunky yarn you know so if you're and, and this is only necessary if you're interested in finishing off your project when I say finishing off your project it's like you you've tied the knot at the end and you want to weave back in any threads this is where the needle will come into play. When you start making garments and things, this is where needles will come into play. But as a beginner crocheter, you'll use needles mainly just to finish off your work and making sure that the yarn is, is weaved through. Now, when I first started crocheting, I didn't know why I why we did that, like why we, why we just didn't cut a knot at the end and keep it moving. But what I found over the years is if you've ever have to repair your blanket, and this might not be the reason for the long tail, this is what I found to be um, helpful. When you, when you weave in a long tail, if you ever have any issues with the blanket, it comes apart in the area you wanna do some repairs, you can find that long tail and you can use that same yarn to repair the area that might have come unraveled. So I had I done um, I had a young lady reach out to me. Her daughter had a blanket that was made many many years ago from like a grandparent, and it tore up all through the center. And she wanted me to repair it. Now I was very hesitant because when you start repairing other people's work, there's sometimes there's a sentimental attachment to it. And this is kind of going off on a tangent, but because there was a long weaving tail through the blanket, I was able to not only use some of the thread that was there, because some of it was met, like, it was like a hole, like a gaping hole, almost like, and then I think at some point the mom must have cut the thread to stop it from unraveling. So there wasn't a lot of extra yarn that I could work with, and it was old, so I couldn't find the, the same type of yarn. Does that make sense? So because there was a long tail in the project, I was able to kind of get to that tail use what I could of that tail and I was able to blend it together. So that's my thoughts behind why we leave a tail, but there could be more reasons. I'm just, that's just why I do it. So you, as you're working a project, as you get better at crocheting, when you're um, weaving in your ends, this is where the yarn needles will come into play. And the necessary is you do want a yarn needle. The unnecessary is you don't necessarily need the metal ones. They're helpful and I'm sure there's a real purpose for them, but as a beginner, these will work just fine and they're not that expensive. Oh no, I don't take it. I take all feedback as positive. Thank you so much. And I'm going to try that. So you're just saying raise up the lights. Um, when my husband comes in again, I'll have him do that. I'm going to try. Listen, I can use any help I can get when it comes to this lighting and it's hot. <laughs> so, okay. I'll try that tip. Thank you so much. I keep, Sun, is it okay to say sunshine? If it's some, if you want me to call you something different, let me know. But thank you. I'll definitely use that tip. And I'm talking to my phone, talking to you. Okay. Anyway, needles. I also keep mine in a little case like this. Another not necessary thing, but helpful. So you can do that too. All righty. Moving all along. I'm organized. I'll be proud of myself. Um, measuring tape. Okay, so do you need a measuring tape as a beginner crocheter? Not necessarily. If you're following someone's tutorial, following someone's pattern, they'll tell you exactly what you need to do. And if you want what they created, you follow right along and you may not need a measuring tape. But and however, <laughs> Thanks. But however, if you want to customize something, so for instance, I made this band here. I have a larger face, so as you can see, um, I made this to fit me, right? So if you wanted to make one for yourself, a measuring tape would come in handy because then you could figure out how much you need to put around, how long your chain needs to be, and then you can create the project for yourself. So when I say something's customizable, it's because you can use a measuring tape to customize it to your 
to what you need for yourself, right? So for instance, even with the blanket, if I wanted to make this, say this blanket is just a little throw, but I wanted a blanket that was, um, or say this blanket was a lap blanket and I wanted it to be a throw blanket, I would use my measuring tape to determine how many inches is a lap blanket versus how many inches is a throw, I would make my foundation chain to that length. So the necessary is you just need a regular measuring tape. The unnecessary is, I can find mine. <laughs> the unnecessary is using a measuring tape that looks like this. totally not necessary that you get a little frog with a cute eye that pops out so that you can measure, right? <laughs> but I'm into the novelty of the crocheting, but this is not necessary. This could be necessary if you want to customize a project, just a super simple fabric. I guess this is kind of what seamstress use. Now there are measuring tapes like this, which is kind of what a carpenter would use, but it doesn't have that bend to it. So I wouldn't recommend one of these unless you're just trying to get a straight measurement. But if you're trying to wrap it around, it may not be the right, this is probably not the right type. So necessary, cheapy little fabric type measuring tape, only if you want to customize a project unnecessary the cute little frog with the pop out eye now you can get all kinds of unnecessary novelty type <laughs> um, measuring tapes on amazon or even um like in the craft stores and you're looking around they usually have them on end caps and things like that but these aren't this isn't it. but it's just so freaking cute right and i have like the thing about this is i have a ton of little novelty um measuring tape, but you don't need them. There's the unnecessary necessary. Okay. All right. I'm about to wrap up my unnecessary, unnecessary necessary. Let's see what we got here. You made that, you made this one? You did? Did it turn out okay? This one was easy to make. Guys, if you, um, I've seen a lot of different ones, but this particular one is literally you know, two straps, single crochet stitch, twisted it, and I sewed it though, mine's sewn, so. But if you make it long enough, you can just tie it, I imagine. Okay, another unnecessary necessary. Do not judge me, but I'm gonna just say it. I'm gonna say it. Did I bring it in here? I didn't bring it in here. Eek, okay. I don't want to get up and leave the live, but my, um, my Kindle, my Kindle is my unnecessary necessary. When I'm crocheting, especially if I'm, cause I like reading too. And I, I like reading crap. Like I don't read anything good. I read complete romance, junk novels, no judgment. This is a judgment free zone, but I love me a good junk romance novel. So I will oftentimes put my um, Kindle on. This is right now. I don't even want to let you see the titles because I do feel like there'll be a little bit of judgment. Even though I don't, I feel like y'all are my people in a sense, but I know there'll probably be a little bit of judgment. <laughs> so I will put my Kindle on. I'll get me some headphones. I'll pop in my headphones and I will crochet and read at the same time. It's like I'm in, I'm in paradise. The Kindle is equivalent to me sitting outside listening to the birds chirp on a nice spring day. Not a nice, sunny, Florida, humid day where the mosquitoes want to compete with life. But when you have like a nice spring day, it's pretty outside and you hear the birds chirping. The Kindle app, my reading my book and crocheting is equivalent to that for me. You know what I mean? It's just like, um, turn out there. yay. Oh, I have the I have the tiger one too, and the panda I lost along the way, but I, then I found it and then I lost it again. But the panda's super cute too. <laughs> She's talking about the measuring tape. Hobby Lobby has her has her too. They ha she has like a tiger, the panda. There's a frog. I don't know. There might be another one too, but um, yeah, we we're just talking about the measuring tapes. But so the um, with the Kindle now on my phone, I can do audiobooks 
And I don't know if you guys do audiobooks or if you've heard of audiobooks. It's, it's probably pretty antiquated now. Everybody probably knows. I like audiobooks like on a scale of one to 10. I'm probably like a six or seven just because when I read, I can give the, the characters my own voice, you know, but with audiobooks, you kind of have to go with whatever the reader gives you. But when I'm crocheting, I don't really care so much about what they sound like. It's more it's like I want to hear what the story is going to be. So if you can get a good person that's reading the audiobook, then um, I like audiobooks and I can use my phone in my audiobook. But on my Kindle, which I think this is a cheat a little bit because they have a text to speech option on the Kindle, which um, is, I'm sure it would drive most people insane to listen to it from a text to speech um, format. But I put it on like this British speaking dialect tone or whatever. So it does give it a little bit of an inflection. But if you know, text to speech is basically like the basic standard way of communicating if you are like hearing impaired. So the words don't really have a lot of inflection. It's just straightforward. But um, when I'm when I have my Kindle, I will put the text to speech on, put it on like the British dialect or the British tone so that it sounds different than what I'm used to hearing. And I will crochet away and I will use that, you know, that feature. But you can't do that on your phone. You can only use audios on your phone. There's no text to speech, or at least I haven't found one. So that is an unnecessary necessary. It's necessary because if you want to zone out and just get a project done, perfect. But it's definitely not necessary that you go buy a, a Kindle, then you go get the audio book, <laughs> you know, and then you pay for that. Like, that's not necessary. Um, the cool thing, though, about um, audio books, let me tell you a quick story. My daughter. <laughs> my daughter w was she's 13. OK, so let's just preference it with that. But she was, I think she was 12 when she did this. She saw um, like a teenage series. I don't think it was, um, it wasn't Harry Potter, but I think it was like Hunger Games or like a Hunger Game type book. And um, she's like, she went out there and she downloaded the free trial period. So you could get 30 days. I think you get 30 days. You get two audio books that you can keep for free or for $5, something like that. So she downloads this whole program. She comes in the room and she's like, yeah, I've read it. I'm like, what did you read? How did you read it? And I started going a little deeper. And she's like, oh, I just got this thing. It was free for 30 days. Come find out. She has signed us up for audiobooks. So I put it on my little calendar after we, you know, we went back and forth about deception and how you just can't go sign up for stuff without telling us. I put it on my calendar to discontinue it after 30 days. And between that, that moment and the discontinuing moment, my husband found out that he loved them too. So we have had audiobooks now for, I think, almost a year and a half. I think there's like a, a nominal fee, but you get two credits plus three stuff, you know, for the month and you can read, you know, you can read the book and the book is yours to keep. And then like, I think the, the thing I like the most about it is like, if you get a title that you don't like, you can just exchange it for another title, which is kind of cool too. So that was just my quick little spill on Kindle audiobooks. But again, that's just my unnecessary that I made necessary <laughs> or whatever. So, I mean, really that's my things. Like I think when you start crocheting, you just want to get the right tools, the right yarn, Give yourself time and patience. Find you a good teacher, someone that you can learn from. And that is the beauty of YouTube is that there are so many young ladies and men that crochet now that you can probably, if you don't learn a stitch from somebody, you can find someone else that does it and you can pick it up from them. Um, I think that's the beauty of learning this craft. But the, the key, the tip, is to make sure you get the right tools to get you started. A chunky yarn with a little hook is going to frustrate you. You know what I mean? Um, an inferior hook to a splitting yarn is going to frustrate you. Um, dark colored yarn learning is going to frustrate you. So figure out that thing and then start and try and don't stop after you've done one row and it doesn't look exactly the way you want as you continue to make them, as you continue to work, it will definitely, definitely, definitely get better. You know? Let's see.
Just trying to make sure I didn't miss any questions. Yeah, I know. When I, you know what I used to do a long time ago? Um, key, Kai, is it Kai or Key? <laughs> um, I used to do um, books on tape. Now, this is dating me, and I've already talked about being dated. But, yeah, we used to do books on tape, and I would pop them in the car when me and my husband were traveling, you know, to and from. And he would get into it. Because at first, he's like, what are you listening to? But as he started listening to it, it's like storytelling. It's super, super cool. Virginia, hi, nice to meet you. Nice to have you. <laughs> Yeah, it, it. I mean, key. Okay, thank you. That's like also when I when I started saying also, and I don't even even know how what that pronounces really to everybody else. It's just Felicia, but I do also. But it's funny to try to hear people say what it is, and I've been on other people's lives, and they're just like, "Hey, Anne, this is so much easier." And I was like, "Why did I pick this as my channel name?" People cannot pronounce it. Yeah, okay, absolutely. That okay, Wall Street Journal. If anybody cares to read that on audiobooks, that's what my husband likes to read. The Wall Street Journal. Oh, you're in Florida, Sunshine? I guess I could have guessed that from your name. <laughs> Today it's like it's yucky outside, it's gray. You know what I've gotten into doing, guys? This is so outside of what I was discussing. We're we're pretty much done with the um, unnecessary necessary at this level. I'm going to do another unnecessary necessary with just gadgets and stuff. I did come across this. If anybody can help me understand these. They 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 marketed as um, like a yarn tension to help you keep your tension when you're crocheting. And I tried to use them a couple of nights ago. And I just don't quite understand um, how it works. And I think it's because I may not crochet like a conventional way. I think, you know, you're maybe you're supposed to hold this finger up when you crochet. Um, but anyway, if anybody knows what that is or can provide me with insight or even point me to the direction of a good video on how to use it, I just, I'm just curious. This is another in my book, it's unnecessary, but I, I imagine it could be. They're selling it, right? So someone has to be benefiting from these. They're not expensive either. I think they were like maybe a couple of dollars. Anyway, so if anybody knows what these are and how to use them, or if you have a video on your channel or I know someone that has a video, let me know. I think they're yarn guides. I don't know, guys. But um, so my next video that I want to do is um, have you ever seen I don't know if you guys are on YouTube or watch other YouTube channels or things like that. But they always do this video or a long time ago would be like what's in my bag. But they were talking about their purse. So I want to do like a version of what's in my bag as it relates to crochet stuff. Like what do I carry around with me if I'm going like on a trip or something, you know. So that's going to be my next I think. Um, live, we'll talk about what's in my bag and then what I carry around with me. And then as far as, um, I also want to do a video on, and I'm trying to gather all these things up, um, like one skein projects, projects that you can do with just one skein of yarn. Like, you know, this is a one skein project, um, mug cozies. Those are one skein projects, but just some fun things that you can do with one skein projects, but not just with one type of yarn. So I want to kind of go into like, if I got a chunky, chunky yarn, what could I do with that? If I have a thin yarn, what could I do with it? So something like that. I think that would be fun. Oh, really? You can make these yourself? Hmm. You can make crochet one yarn tension. Oh. Okay. Well, I have to check on that. I haven't, I haven't seen, I, I haven't seen it, but then I kind of stay, are you guys like this too? Like when you crochet, do you find it like, like, is it easier for you to just kind of stay tunnel vision and stay focused on one project? Or do you like 
go all over because sometimes when I'm in my creative space, like my mind, I'm trying to create things. I can't watch a lot of crocheters because I'm like, oh, I want to make that. Oh, I want to make that. And that's the same thing that happens when I go into like the yarn store. I'm like, oh, I need to buy that. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys are like that. So I don't know where all the other, like what all other crocheters on YouTube are doing just because I try to stay single minded when I'm trying to create. When I need inspiration, I'll go to Pinterest and things like that. Um, if I want to learn a new pattern or something, I'll look at someone's, you know, YouTube channel and try to get inspiration from that. But I usually try to like stay like, you know, especially if I'm like in that creative zone. So I didn't even know someone had something like that. That's really cool. I have to check those out. So yeah, that's what's coming up. Oh, and then also last thing, and I'm going to get off. Um, I was thinking, and you guys tell me, even in my replay later, um, I was thinking what I might do because my lives have gotten longer than I anticipated. I really wanted them to be like 20 minute, 30 minute videos and kind of morphed into this 50 minute session. But what I'm thinking I might do is like a corresponding video to go with my live. So me discussing this, for instance, for however long, mixed in with talking about this, if I did it as a video, then you could just go straight to that video, get the information now and move as if having to the whole live again. So I haven't worked out the details on how I want to do that, but maybe that will be something I'll want to incorporate. So we'll see how that goes. What's coming up on my channel, um, I have the fingerless gloves that's supposed to be posting, I think, today or tomorrow. The baby blanket that I'll have posted by the end of the month. Um, I want to do a shawl with, um, I bought some more mandala ombre yarn. I went into Joanne's fabric and lost my mind. So I bought some more yarn for that. And then I also want to do the, uh, the scarf with the pockets. So those are what's coming up. That's what I'm working on. So hopefully I'll have those things completed within the next couple of months. Improve your kids and crochet just Okay, I'll do that. That makes sense. I'll do that. Thanks for that. Um, so that's what I have coming up. And then you know what else I did, guys? I started my daughter got me onto TikTok. So I did two TikTok videos over the last couple of days. And they've they've done it surprisingly well. I think I've got like, I was thinking I might have like two or three people watch them. And I think one has like 400 views. So I, that's been really fun. I know I think TikTok is going away, but... Instagram has reels, which is similar to TikTok, which I understand. So it's kind of like putting putting action to music. And I think it was really fun doing it. So if you don't have my Instagram, Ocelan underscore crochets, you should go ahead over there and check that out too, because I'm trying to be more engaged on that platform. I just, just YouTube has been my thing. So I haven't really gotten into any other like social medias like like that you know what I mean so I've been trying to engage that more so I have a couple of little TikTok reels and things like that over there so if you want to check those out go ahead and do that too so if you don't have any other questions I will look for them in my replay um and if not I will see you all in my next video thank you so much for all the engagement and the in the conversation I appreciate it and I'll see you guys soon thanks bye